Dear friends, welcome to a personalized episode of Enlight Me. Today we will explore the revival of the Chevrolet Camaro as an electric car, Mitsubishi's new Delica van concept, and the environmental impact of Drive Electric Plus technology. We will also discuss Graphene's promising applications in clean tech and the financial challenges of global coal phase-out plans. Graphene, a two-dimensional form of graphite, discovered in 2004, is being explored for its vast potential in clean tech applications. Known for being stronger than steel and a better electrical conductor than copper, it has caught the attention of scientists worldwide. Researchers at ETH Zurich have visualized electron whirlpools in graphene at room temperature, opening doors to further exotic electron transport effects. UK-based Lavidian is using graphene to enhance tire sustainability, reducing microplastic pollution and improving EV performance. Additionally, graphene is being tested in lithium sulfur EV batteries by companies like Lighten, offering a cobalt-free solution. The National University of Singapore is developing niobium graphene batteries with a potential 30-year lifespan and rapid charging capabilities. Graphene's lightweight properties also aim to reduce EV battery pack bulk with ongoing research at the Graphene Engineering Innovation Center. Researchers from Chalmers University of Technology in Sweden and Central European University in Austria have found that coal phase-out plans globally include $200 billion in compensation, excluding China and India. The study indicates that if China and India, the largest coal users, adopt similar phase-out plans, the cost could exceed $2 trillion. While Europe leads in phasing out coal with just transition strategies, Supporting affected workers and regions, achieving global climate targets requires China and India's participation. With 16% of global coal plants, 23 countries have pledged $209 billion in compensation, equating to 6 gigatons of avoided CO2 emissions. However, funding challenges remain, especially for major coal consumers like China and India, where estimated compensation could be $2.4 trillion for a 2 degrees Celsius target and $3.2 trillion for a 1.5 degrees Celsius target. Fossil fuels dominated cement and steel industries until recently. A Swiss team from ETH Zurich is now developing a solar thermal trap capable of reaching temperatures above 1,000 degrees Celsius, essential for high heat industrial processes. Unlike solar cells, which generate electricity directly, concentrating solar systems use sunlight to produce thermal energy. The ETH team's device uses a synthetic quartz rod and an opaque silicon disk to efficiently trap and transfer heat. Their device achieves 1050 degrees Celsius at its absorbing plate, making it viable for real-world applications like cement manufacturing. Though still in proof of concept, this innovation could revolutionize industries that require high temperatures. The U.S. Department of Energy is supporting similar technologies with new funding rounds aimed at accelerating commercial deployment and improving efficiency. The initiative also aligns with efforts to reduce green hydrogen production costs. Batteries in smartwatches and electric cars typically use lithium that travels globally before reaching manufacturers. A new analysis from Pennsylvania's Department of Environmental Protection suggests that extracting lithium from Marcellus shale, gas well wastewater could supply up to 40% of the U.S. demand. Researchers, including Justin Mackey from the National Energy Technology Laboratory, have achieved over 90% efficiency in lab extractions. This lithium, currently sourced largely from Chile and processed in China, is considered critical by the U.S. Geological Survey. Domestic production by 2030 is a government goal. Compliance data allowed researchers to quantify lithium in Pennsylvania's wastewater, with potential beyond state borders. The next step involves assessing environmental impacts and developing extraction techniques. 
This initiative supports the U.S. Department of Energy's fossil energy and carbon management goals. The U.S. offshore wind industry, after setbacks due to inflation and supply chain issues, is gaining momentum again. Maryland faced a potential loss of the 966 megawatt skipjack project when Ersted withdrew from offtake agreements, but state legislators quickly passed House Bill 1296. Effective June 1st, this bill allows reallocating offshore renewable energy credits and enables other developers to increase project capacities. U.S. Wind, a key player, aims to develop up to 1,800 megawatts in Maryland and received a $265 million boost from Apollo Global Management in 2020. Maryland's commitment includes developing 8.5 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2031. Additionally, the state collaborates with North Carolina and Virginia under the Smart Power Partnership to enhance offshore wind resources and infrastructure, aiming to become a central hub for the Atlantic Coast wind industry. Researchers at the Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory, GORNL, in collaboration with three other national labs, have developed a free online platform to help utilities understand the impact of solar energy projects on their power systems. Named the Open Energy Data Initiative, Solar Systems Integration Data and Modeling, this platform supports the integration of renewable energy by allowing users to insert their own algorithms and data for analysis. It offers four major applications data pre-processing, voltage deduction algorithms, smart control systems, and algorithms to detect abnormal grid behavior. Additionally, ORNL developed a case study for detecting grid faults. Future developments may include tools for electric vehicle charging impacts and smart building technologies. Let's now turn our attention to the UK's innovative police technology. UK police are developing an EMP device to combat crimes committed using e-bikes and electric scooters. The Defence Science and Technology Lab, in collaboration with the National Police Chiefs Council, is creating a portable electromagnetic pulse device. This Ghostbusters-style backpack can disrupt the motor's control circuit of a suspect's vehicle, tricking it into thinking it is overheating and shutting it down. Council Chair Gavin Stevens indicates it could be available in months. While the device aims to safely stop criminal activity, concerns exist about its effectiveness and potential collateral damage to other electronic devices. This innovative approach highlights the growing need to address the misuse of electric micromobility options, which, while environmentally friendly, offer criminals speed and stealth. The aim is that the device will be harmless to humans and other electronic devices. And now, pivot our discussion towards automotive news. General Motors President Mark Roos aims to bring back the Chevrolet Camaro as an electric car focused on athletic dynamics and affordability, rather than high horsepower. Roos, passionate about the Camaro since his first car was a 1967 model, envisions an EV priced similarly to the 2024 Chevrolet Equinox EV, starting at $34,195. With a $7,500 federal tax credit, the effective price drops to $27,495, making it about $5,000 cheaper than the last gas-powered Camaro. Production of the Camaro ended in December 2023, but Roos suggests the nameplate could return, possibly as a four-door vehicle for broader appeal. The EV would utilize GM's Ultium powertrain architecture, though scaling up battery production is essential to achieve cost efficiency. Reuse's vision emphasizes maintaining the Camaro's legacy while adapting to modern market demands. Mitsubishi's teaser image hints at the DX concept, likely a preview of the next Delica van. The Delica, known for its off-road capability, is envisioned with SUV-like all-terrain features and a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle powertrain. Unique concept features include trail gauging lights and a massive see-through screen. Mitsubishi's Momentum 2030 plan 
promises more electrified models and introduces one new or refreshed vehicle annually from 2026 to 2030. Notably, Mitsubishi is considering two new market segments. The Delica could potentially use the Outlander's US certified PHEV system, featuring a 20 kilowatt hour battery and 38 miles of EV only range. This would position the Delica as a unique offering in the US market, appealing to adventure seekers and overlanders, especially given competitors' delays and lack of enthusiasm in similar segments. The final run of 2024, Alfa Romeo Giulia and Stelvio Quadrifoglio models will be limited edition super sports, with fewer than 150 units available in the US. Both feature a 2.9-liter twin-turbo V6 engine, producing 505 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque, enhanced with a mechanical limited-slip differential for improved stability and cornering. The Giulia Supersport reaches 60 miles per hour in 3.8 seconds, while the Stelvio does it in 3.6 seconds. Carbon fiber components reduce weight and improve dynamics, with unique exterior colors like Rosso Etna Red and Nero Volcano Black. Interiors boast red 3D carbon fiber trim and a 12.3-inch TFT digital dash with a special race configuration. Limited to 72 Giulia and 52 Stelvio units, Prices start at $88,365 and $95,965, respectively. BYD, a Chinese auto giant, is introducing the Shark, a new plug-in hybrid pickup truck. While it won't be sold in the United States, it will be available in Mexico, where BYD plans to build a new production facility. The Shark aims to compete with mid-size pickups like the Ford Ranger, Chevy Colorado, Toyota Hilux, and Nissan Navara. The Shark features a 1.5-liter four-cylinder engine paired with two electric motors, generating a combined 430 horsepower. It boasts a towing capacity of 55 12 pounds and a maximum payload of 1841 pounds. The truck can travel 62 miles on electric-only mode and over 520 miles with a full tank and charged battery. Its interior includes a rotating 12.8-inch infotainment touchscreen and a 10.3-inch digital gauge cluster. Latest data reveals significant reduction in EV charging emissions through Drive Electric Plus technology. Emissions from EV charging vary widely due to the carbon intensity of electricity from the national grid, influenced by renewable energy and weather conditions. UK government figures show an average EV emits 81 grams of CO2e per mile, while petrol cars emit 263 grams. In 2024, grid carbon intensity averaged 129.9 grams CO2 per kilowatt hour, but ranged from 19 to 295 grams. Drive Electric Plus technology optimizes charging times, reducing average EV emissions to under 40 grams CO2e per mile and as low as 9 grams. Drive Electric, with over 15 years of EV expertise, supports businesses in lowering emissions. Strategic partnership with Sumitomo Corporation aims to expand its services and technology. Elon Musk's recent firing of virtually all of Tesla's 500-member charging division has upended the company's supercharger network, a key driver of its electric vehicle sales. The layoffs followed a meeting where charging chief Rebecca Tanucci was dismissed after resisting further cuts. Despite Musk's social media promises to continue network expansion, vendors and contractors have been told to halt new projects, creating uncertainty. Tesla's energy team, already overburdened, has been tasked with managing the superchargers, but faces significant challenges. The company's planned $500 million investment for 2024 represents a significant reduction, potentially jeopardizing partnerships with other automakers and straining relationships with suppliers and utilities. The layoffs mark another tumultuous chapter for Tesla amid shifting strategies and declining auto sales. Up next, we're exploring Apple's latest accessibility features 
Apple has announced new accessibility features for iPhone and iPad, including vehicle motion cues to reduce motion sickness. This feature uses sensors to display animated dots around the screen during vehicle movement, helping to alleviate sensory conflict. The dots move opposite to the vehicle's motion, enhancing user comfort. Additionally, CarPlay will receive upgrades like voice control, color filters for colorblind users, and sound recognition for alerts on car horns and sirens. These features aim to improve accessibility for all users. Expected to be part of iOS 18, further details will likely emerge during Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference in June. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of Innovation Pulse. If you enjoyed our insights and are eager to learn more, the Enlight Me app is just a tap away. Expand your knowledge with personalized content on over 20 diverse topics, from crypto to health and beyond, all curated to fit your interests. Download the Enlight Me app now at the Apple Store or Google Play, or visit the enlightme.ai website. Stay curious. Stay enlightened.